When a city is destroyed by natural disasters, usually the inhabitants just rebuild their destroyed homes where they are at and continue on with their lives. However, some places take it a step further to ensure that their buildings will remain when these destructive forces return. Meet Galveston, a port on the Texas coast just south of Houston, situated on the barrier island of the same name that physically transformed itself to keep the city safe. Galveston, named in honor of the Spanish Viceroy Bernardo de Galvez y Madrid from the 18th century, is located in the Gulf Coast region of the United States, which is no stranger to hurricanes. With a rough average of 12 named storms forming in the Gulf each year, they are posed to strike the vulnerable area during the hurricane season. The region has no real protection against these storms as the area is generally flat and of low elevation, making any existence during the summer months of the year an uneasy time for the 64 million people who live there. Texas and its subsequent barrier islands lay directly in the middle of the Hurricane Alley, the usual path for hurricanes from Western Africa. The problem is that the barrier islands on the Texas coast are mere speed bumps to hurricanes that plow into the area. Only rising up to a total of 7 feet in elevation, these islands pose no real chance of stopping the surges that are formed by the storms. Even with this, these facts have not dissuaded humans from settling on the islands. From the first contact between the local natives and Europeans up to today, the island has featured a colorful assortment of people, from pirates to revolutionaries to presidents, and these people were all too accustomed to the deadly storms that blew through the area. However, one storm in particular changed not only the societal trajectory of the island, but its physical appearance as well. On September 8, 1900, the island was struck by a devastating Category 4 hurricane that destroyed two-thirds of the city. Despite warnings by local famous meteorologist Isaac Klein, very few people evacuated the city in preparation for the storm. For hours, the hurricane battered the city. Even the highest point of land on the island, which is 9 feet above sea level, was dwarfed by a 15-foot storm surge that washed over the entire island. Winds up to 100 miles per hour pummeled the city. Eyewitnesses reported seeing bricks and timbers flying. The city looked like an aftermath of a war zone. After the storm passed, property damages are estimated to be $17 million. Calculated with today's inflation would be $585 million. After the storm, a 3 mile long, 30 feet high wall debris was left in the middle of the city. Every building experienced some level of damage, and almost 4,000 homes were leveled. Over 1,900 acres of land in an arc shape around the city was destroyed. During the course of and after the storm, over 10,000 people lost their homes and an estimated number of about 8,000 people, 20% of the city's population, lost their lives. The 1900 hurricane, also called the Great Storm of 1900, was and still is the deadliest natural disaster in United States history. In the years following the hurricane, the Galvestonians overwhelmingly voted in favor of having a seawall built to protect the city. Ironically, the same proposal they first refused a few years before the disastrous storm struck. The designs for a seawall called for a 3 mile long, 17 feet high concrete wall that would stretch the southeast edge of the island to protect the town. The construction of the barrier would start in 1902 with the first segment being completed in July of 1904, with more segments being added until 1963. Once the wall was finished, it would stretch 10 miles on the island. Instead of just having a wall that extended 17 feet in the air by itself, the city also decided to raise 500 blocks of the city in conjunction with the seawall by pumping almost 15 million cubic yards of sand from the Galveston Bay underneath the city. During this endeavor, over 2,000 homes were raised as well. This project of raising the land would be completed in 1911. In 1915, another storm of the same intensity and path struck Galveston with a storm surge of 12 feet. Thankfully, 
only 53 people lost their lives in comparison to the 8,000 who lost their lives in the storm 15 years earlier. The initial test of the seawall was successful in preventing a similar disaster that struck the island years before and has succeeded in minimizing the damage dealt to Galveston by hurricanes in the subsequent years. Though Galveston was unable to achieve the same prominence it held before the Great Storm of 1900, even being eclipsed by the emergence of Houston as the most important city and port in Texas. Galveston continues to be a prominent hub of tourism and shipping to this day. The seawall is an integral part of modern day Galveston as it is one of the most iconic parts of the once great city on the Texas coast. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in topics like this, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the bell button.